Hey guys, welcome to Indie Game Hustle. My name is Charles, and in this video, I wanted to show you guys how to create what they call a blob shadow. Um, basically, this is like a nice little shadow that shows up underneath your player when he jumps or when he's moving. And what this is really good for is, I think uh, it's really good for when you're moving around in the air, you kind of get an idea of where you're going to land. And this is really good for platforming. And so I was I wanted to show you guys how to do something like this so that if you're still making a platform game, if you're still working on that, which I am still working on that, um, this will definitely come in handy. As you can see, jumping from one platform to the other, uh, it, it, it's really pretty nice to be able to see where you're going to land. Um, some a lot some of the biggest games uh, like Mario and all them they all have some type of shadow that is directly um, below the player, and so we wanted to have something that kind of represents that. And so I want to show you guys how to do it. And uh, the asset that we're going to be using uh, is a projector. So let me go ahead and show you that. That one is called it is called the dynamic shadow projector here and so it's a free asset on the asset store so just search for this here and it should come up so all you want to do is go ahead and download that just like any other asset in your uh, project all right so once you download that you're going to have something like this where it says dynamic shadow projector and what you won't see is this projector for um, lightweight render pipeline master universal here. You will not see this folder. We're gonna need to download that folder if you're using um, basically URP. Um, I believe this is actually necessary for standard, but I have not tried it in standard because I'm only using URP. I would recommend uh, using URP. That's kind of the way things are going. So I'm just gonna rock with that. So in order to get this particular folder, um, what you're going to need to do is go to the GitHub and let me show you that. That is going to be right here. So there's a link to the GitHub right here in the asset store, which is really nice. So it's easy to get to. So if you click on that, um, I think I already have it open. Yep, it's right here. So um, you would just, you can look here and just kind of read about some other things that need to be set up. And we'll take a look at those here in a moment. But really all you want to do is download this zip file. And once you download that zip file, inside of that zip file, you're going to see a folder arrangement that says this here. Okay. And so you want to move that folder into the root and that should work just fine. All right. So once that's there, uh, the next thing we want to do is look at some settings. So I think the, I think it's in this graphics settings. I have a, it's on my other screen. Let me bring that over and I go to player settings and I'm going to go to, is it graphics here? And I believe what we're going to need to do, let me make sure that I'm uh, looking at the correct thing. And I'll go ahead and click on high quality and see if I'm doing the right thing here. Ah, yes. Okay, great. All right. So once you go in here, you go to graphics, you go to graphics and click this, then click on whatever universal RP settings you have here. And in your inspector, you have this render list here. Okay. And so basically what you want to do, and you're going to need to change this forward rendering uh, to forward rendering with projector pass. And so what you want to do is once you bring in that additional project for uh, lightweight render pipeline, you just go ahead and click this. And then you just go ahead and select this here. So this is what you would have had. And now you would go ahead and select this one. And so that's it. So once you do that, you should be good. That information is also listed, I believe, at the bottom of this page. It kind of goes over that and explains it in probably way more detail than I'm going to do. Um, I don't know how all this stuff works. Um, I do not need to know all of the details. Um, I just wanted to do the thing that I need. So if you guys want to play with that and kind of learn more about how it works, feel free and read through that. All right. So I have that installed here. And so I'm going to go ahead and close this and go ahead and close that. And so we're good there. All right. 
So again, we have our blob and let's go ahead and see how to set that up very quickly. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back into my mode. Now I'm gonna get rid of this blob so we can do it from scratch together. So I'll just go ahead and actually just deactivate it and that's fine. All right, so we have our player here and um, it's whatever you're using for your player character um, is fine. I'm using game creators character here, but you can use any game, uh, any type of character that you're using. Um, the first thing you would want to do is right click and what you want to do is go ahead and create empty and then the next thing i'm going to do is go ahead and rename this so we can call this blob shadow and when you do that what we want to do is take this blob shadow and we can put it and make it a child of the parent of the player and then the next thing we want to do is go to the blob shadow and we can add a component and the component you're looking for is projector. There's gonna be two, but specifically projector. And so just type in project and it should come up. So we'll put this one first. And then the next one is going to be the projector for a lightweight render pipeline or LWRP, select that, and that should be good. All right, great. So next thing we want to do is reposition this uh, here. So we're going to move this to our player and I'm gonna go ahead and do an overhead view here. And I'll move that there. And next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and rotate that down. All right, great. So that's looking good so far. All right, so let's take a look at some of the settings. Some of these are basically just like camera settings. And um, I don't, I'm not going to go over everything, but I am just going to show the things so that we can get the desired effect. So uh, the first thing we want to do is switch it to orthographic. So we want to go ahead and do that. And so you can see that that is what it's going to be projecting. So it's going to stay the same size no matter what. So what we want to do is change that size down to something more reasonable that's representative of the player. And so we can go ahead and do that there. So that seems about right. And then you can reposition it here. So I'll leave it here just for now. And then you see it's kind of really long. So we want to change that height. So that's going to be part of the far clip plane, I believe. So we'll just go ahead and reduce that. All right, and so we can reduce that down to about there for now. And I'll explain that here in a second. All right, all right, so we have that for our clip plane down. We can just put it at a solid four, that's fine. And we just leave everything else the way it is. Great, perfect. All right, so the next thing we're gonna need is a material. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and hit this key here, and I'm just gonna type in the word shadow. Uh, shadow. And um, there's some shadows that come along with this. Um, so what I'm going to do is select test shadow because that's a shadow that I already made. And I'll show you how that's kind of laid out. All right. So when you get this particular project, it is going to have this, for instance, this blob shadow projector, hard shadow, soft, soft light, um, soft light with shadow, etc. some different settings. And you can kind of play with those. Um, but if you want to kind of create your own, um, all you would need to do is right click, go to create, go to material, and then in your uh, shader settings, you want to click on that and you want to go where it says dynamic shadow projector. And then you want to, I believe, select shadow. And actually, let me make sure it's the right one. Oh, it's not going to be that one, actually. It's going to be projector for lightweight render pipeline. Then you do shadow. And then in here, what you want to do is select um, the actual texture for that. So let me go ahead and change that to that. And so we can go ahead and select this right here. Uh, you can create your own. This stuff is, you know, pretty normal. So I'm just going to select that. And then you want to pick a fall off. So I'm just going to pick some type of fall off that's inside this project. I'll pick this one here. All right, cool. So now we have this and that's pretty that should be it so i'm going to select my blob shadow again and i'm just going to go ahead and take this material and put it here all right so we get that new material and we can rename it and we'll just call it new blob mat for now all right cool all right and then the next thing we want to do is where you see the stencil test here we want to go ahead and click that and um 
what I'll do is reposition that. So as you can see, there's the shadow there. And so we want that right underneath that player there. All right, and if you wanna change that size, we can kind of change it. And that's a little big, just then kind of depends on what you're looking for, right? Um, we can do something like a, I don't know, like a seven. That's not bad, that could work. All right, cool. And let's see what else. All right, so we have our shadow. And so what we can do, we can move it up. We can move it down. Now just keep in mind, the shadow is projecting on pretty much any object here. Now you can change like the rendering layer mask to be certain objects. So if you don't want the player, you can probably work on separating that. But for now, just to keep it simple, we're just gonna leave it like that. And uh, ideally what you can do is change it. Now, as you can see, if we left it up too high, now it is giving us the desired effect on the ground, but it's also affecting the legs of the, the player here. So what I'll do is go ahead and bring it really low to where it's almost not really touching the player. So we can leave it like right there. And that should work out pretty good. And that height for that projection is pretty good. So that should be fine for now. All right. So what I'll just go ahead and do, I'll go ahead and just delete the old one because we don't need it. All right, and so we have that blob shadow. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and move the player. Should be good to go. Let's go ahead and hit play and see if that is working the way it should be. All right. All right, cool. So there you have it, blob shadow. And it's really great, as you can see, as you get higher it kind of starts to disappear get closer it gets darker and you can kind of mess with the settings to kind of adjust that and then it's working out pretty good just like before all right so let's go ahead and turn it off just to see uh how it plays without it all right so if you don't have it you don't know where you're going to jump you don't know how see you don't know how far you are up and just like that and so that's the difference between having that blob shadow and um, not having it, it's, it's a really good indicator for a platforming game to have some type of shadow element. In some ways, you can adjust your directional light to be pointed directly down, but if you're using your directional light for other things, like just lighting your scene at a certain angle and all those sorts of things, um, this could be uh, a really good way to do it without being too like costly on performance, I think. so. Um, don't quote me on performance stuff because that's, I'm not really uh, super, you know, into the whole performance thing. I'm not sure how much performance this really takes, but I imagine it probably doesn't take that much. So, um, but anyway, I hope this was useful. Um, I hope this will help you guys as platformer or whatever type of game you're doing uh, using the shadow. The, of course, this tool has a bunch of different options here and you can kind of play with that and just kind of read about it. It's really nice and of course it is free so that's really cool and if you're wondering about this little uh, asset here this little witch's room here with the pot and the hat that is a you modeler thing um, it's pretty awesome this comes with the current uh, version of you modeler so if you have you modeler make sure that you head over there and download it before it goes because for the most part, every time Umaler does an update, they always have a really nice asset kit to go with it. And I think that is that is pretty dope, to be honest with you. Like every time you upgrade your version of like your asset, it, it like includes this this nice little thing that you would technically have to pay for. Now, once it's gone, it's gone. Um, you won't be able to get it again. But what's dope is that once you actually once it comes out and it goes away, it goes on the asset store for a pretty reasonable price. So if you like this and this is useful for you and your project, you can still purchase it um, if you missed it. Um, but chances are you're going to get a new asset to go with Umaler, which is always pretty dope. And I always make sure that I upgrade because there's always some cool stuff. I think they had like they had the sci-fi one. They had the Tomb Raider style one, where it's like the ancient tombs. They have this one. They had like an RPG village before. And I have all of those. So, um, yeah, it's pretty dope. So definitely take a look at Umaler and uh, what they're doing. It's basically a really cool way to showcase 
um, what's capable with you, Mahler, which is probably why I did it. Now, this is not like a sponsorship or anything. Um, I just personally use you, Mahler, for pretty much everything. Um, of course, you know, I use other tools like Pro Builder and whatnot, and um, they both have pros and cons, of course, but um, I really like you, Mahler, um, and I'm pretty much almost 100% using it at this point. Um, um, so yeah, but anyway, I don't want to make this go long. So yeah, for me, finding this solution to having my player um, being able to jump and be able to see below them, kind of like the Super Mario games, um, I really needed to find a solution and for a while I could never find a solution and then I kind of stumbled onto it and then I started to understand exactly what it was I was looking for. It was called projection, etc, etc, and then I came across the asset and I was like, Phew. I found a solution. So the next time that you find yourself in a situation where you can't seem to figure it out, just remember, never give up and keep moving forward. Peace.